Hello and welcome to the channel. I am Dave, Gamer's Resident Magic Expert, and today we get to uh, crack a box, and it's been a while. We have a draft booster box here of Strixhaven School of Mages, fresh off the presses, new set that I've been very excited to get my hands on. Um, this is a draft box. There's two different products out now for this. There's set boosters and draft boosters. Draft boosters is the traditional pack you're used to, what you use to draft, which we do every week in the store when COVID isn't running rampant, of course. And we have set boosters, which uh, we'll dig into in a different video. I think without further ado, I'm just gonna crack this because it's been a while since I got to crack some packs. Let's go. Ah, uh, it never gets old. I think I've opened hundreds of packs in my lifetime. And there's still so much joy in seeing what's inside. I'm absolutely adoring the art from this set, by the way. A little more, I guess, uh, wholesome, a little less high fantasy and more kind of zany in this set. And sometimes that break is needed. Let's open our first pack. Oh, there we go. When's the last time you've had real cards in your hand, right? Sick of playing digital. Great set. And the key to this set and what I love are these Mythical Archive cards, Urza's Rage, that brings me all the way back. This is uh, one of the first cards I remember seeing Urza's Rage, and at the time I was amazed. And maybe the power level has gone a bit higher than that nowadays, but uh, I love, I, I think the art for this has encapsulated how much I loved that card when I first saw it. Decent first pack, a rare. One of the Deans, the Deans being the double side cards in this set, they're really utilizing the double card mechanic a little more than they used to. Not one of the good Deans, I think. Absolutely fine and limited. Probably our first pick out of this pack. But uh, not the strongest pack. Not the strongest limited pack, anyway. Nothing very noteworthy in the commons again. I love this art. Diana, sip, sipping the tea. Ooh, very nice rare. Probably our first pick here in limited. Multiple choice. Bit boring when our first picks have been rares, but nice X modal card. And Tendrils of Agony, absolute gorgeous art. Two rare uh, mythic archives already. I like what they've been doing with the, the different promos and sets recently. They've gone a bit outside the box. I think it's not for everyone. People haven't always liked them, but I'm enjoying them a lot. So lessons uh, are these cards you can uh, fetch when you learn one of the mechanics in the set from your sideboard. But importantly, you can get rare lessons and they're at the start of the uncommon slot, which threw me a little bit. But that means you can get triple mythic packs in this set, uh, which is really cool. You can get an archive card, the mythic, and a, a lesson card, which can be a mythic as well. So you can get some absolute god packs in this set. Ooh, we got a foil. Does that mean so this was uncommon? And we got Cody, the Codex. I hate this card because I don't like that there's an eye in a book, but uh, it is very cool and probably very powerful in Commander. Our foil. We'll get that straight into a sleeve as well. Do not want any foils bending. Also, great Dean, just an owl and a buggy. So the archives packs in every uh, every pack, or archive cards in every pack. Ooh. Wandering. Uh, Wandering Lad to explore the fast lands. Very nice EDH card. Maybe a constructed card in the front side. Probably our first pick being coiled out of this pack if we were drafting. And cultivate with another fantastic art. We really nailed the mythical archives here. One of the better black commons. I won't linger too much in the commons. I know you guys want to see what rares we crack here, but 
if you're drafting one of the more powerful cards. Ooh, Quandrix Command. You know, Commands I don't think have hit it out of the park this time. They're decent, but definitely Commands from other, other multicolor sets have been more powerful. And uh, these ones aren't as great. World One Denial and uh, Foil Elephant. We love it. We love to see it. Probably going to sleeve all our foils. We've had some bending issues with recent sets, so when you get a foil, you do want to put it straight in the sleeve, folks. Rip Apart, such a nice, such a nice card. Just want to stop the comment on this. Multi-format playable, I think. Great like integration of a removal spell on a sideboard kind of card put together, meaning you can main deck these. People think it's because they're moving to kind of best of one formats online, but I think it's a good design no matter what. Quilk, rare, really like. Slam Dunk first pick out of this pack. And Agonizing Remorse, not impressive, but nice, nice art. I started out of another mythical archive. I think I'm going to be saying that a lot in this video. Ooh, bookworm. It reminds me of Palaka Worm and probably going to end up the same Unlimited where people sleep on it for a while and then people not being able to beat it. Spear as well, very good. Could see some constructive play. But, ooh, Slam Dunk our first pick out of the pack. Sparring Regime, probably not good enough for standard, but a very powerful uh, white card here. I like to do checklist cards like that. You don't have to check them off. You can just write what you want on them. Means they're also good for multiple formats, where I remember running around GP halls looking for the correct one for my uh, for my uh, Huntmaster of the Fells. That wasn't pleasant. And Shock. This card looking to make waves in a lot of formats. Lumamancer, Lumimancer. People are split about how to pronounce it, but really good and a really good uncommon slot here in general. Any of these are going to be excellent in your limited deck. Ooh, my pick for most impactful EDH card of the set, Harness Infinity. Just draw six bazillion cards. I don't know. It's been a while since I played a game of Commander, but I think drawing six bazillion cards is still good. Back in my day, you know. Also, a little note, this is the Luca Planeswalker emblem. I forgot he's in the set. He's the backside of the wolf. But the wolf is so unassuming, I just I just didn't <laughs> get around to reading all of what the Planeswalker did. A bit of a mediocre Planeswalker as well, in fairness. But it's funny that I don't even register him in the set because he's on the back of a creature card. Another limited bomb, but not much... Not much here for Constructed. And Claim the Firstborn. Constructed All-Star. Multiple format. It's a beautiful new art. And another foil. No exciting foils really so far. Hall of Oracles. I'm very unsure about this card. It seems kind of sweet, though. It's fixing for the multicolor set. It has a relevant effect. It's going to be really good and limited. Probably pushing it maybe a couple years ago. Good enough for constructed. Probably not anymore. Beautiful village rights. Man, I'm going to get four of so many of these. So many of these archive cards. Ooh, on my uh, on my short list for one of the most impactful constructed cards in the format, Light Scribe. Very cheap at the moment to buy, but uh, I think this card is going to see play in maybe Pioneer. There is uh, there is like a historic, there is a heroic deck in Pioneer that would love this card, but definitely in uh, Standard. When Standard gets running up again in the shop, you're going to want this guy. Beautiful counter spell art. It's weird that they're rare. That's mostly for Arena, so you have to. Uh, Buy certain one where our wild cards, but it balances out and uh, it just means you get slightly less of cards like Counterspell or Fatal Saluting in that slot 
for your opening uh, boosters in store. IRL even. This is a very powerful card to have printed on Common I thought Humiliate. Reminds me of Todd Erasure from a couple sets ago. I think going to be as impactful, if not maybe a little more, in Standard. A Sweet Rare and uh, Dream Strix. It's rootlessly efficient and definitely the first pick here out of this pack. Value-wise, though, we're not doing incredibly well here. I think there are a few sleepers in this set, especially since it's so uh, close to rotation. There's a couple cards that uh, I, I've specced on a little bit. Shh. But uh, I think a big a big reason the value isn't incredibly high is maybe because of these guys, the Snarl Cycle, which aren't very cheap cards. They're still nice opens. I'm happy to be opening one here. But uh, traditionally, when the original cycle of these came out, they weren't that sought after in that standard format. Though I think these are going to end up being more powerful and maybe going up in price a little in the future. But uh, we got the green black, uh, the Necro Blossom Snarl here. Love that compulsive research art. Commons have been a bit mediocre. Sounds weird, but we just haven't opened the best common in a couple of colors yet. I wish you, you gotta love the flavor. Grotesque, truly grotesque. Look at that eye back go. We need him to learn. I'm not sure why we need him to learn, but we do. Ooh, body of research. This is a favorite of mine. Big boar. Just make a big old 2020 with no evasion and hope that's good enough. This card is sweet. I, I can imagine this one being an absolute uh absolute riot in uh EDH as well, just making like a 50-50. Make a 50-50, go, do something about it. Revitalize, nice. And another foil. A lot of, lot of foil, a lot of mediocre foils. Where, where, where are big mythic foils, you know? Letting that note already there. Some some mediums, but very cool mythic. Uh, can kind of go infinite because of its mage craft. Cool card. Not sure if it's going to find a spot anywhere. I'll be certainly trying it though. And Luca into it. Luca from a couple sets ago that was very powerful. Definitely Luca into this big A drop and try and just go off. Kind of like that. Ooh, absolute bomb here, Archmage. Unbeatable bomb. Another remorse. Another remorse. Well, remorses are good. I think they're good. They see some play in some older formats, so I'm not I'm not complaining. It's a card that could easily be reprinted into standard any time. Well, I like show of confidence. I was kind of low on this card when uh, when I first did. I, I like to do limited reviews with some friends before a set comes out where you see what's good, what's not. And I originally had this quite low, but the more I've played, this is this is really good in its archetype. And even only getting to copy it once, it's like a storm-esque effect. It's really powerful to trigger Magecraft multiple times. I'm probably taking it from this pack. Oh, maybe not this rare, though. Oh, double rare. We got a foil. I love Dragon Guard Elite. The foil Dragon Guard Elite here. This is a card I think is going to see constructive play and is very good and limited. I am not sure what rare I'm taking here. These are both very good. Valentine, the front side of the Dean, not being incredible. But the back side, Dean of Root, she is she's a brick house. Ooh, I think I'll take... Dragon's Guard, it leaves you a little more open. It kind of goes in any green deck and is powerful. I don't know. That's a that's a close choice. You guys tell me which one you pick there, because I'm stumped. I'm liking this comment a lot, by the way. I haven't commented on many of the comments. It's a lot more powerful than it looks. It's really easy to gain life in this format. This becoming a four mana menace creature is not out of the question. Like, 
relatively easy. Big old Rod of God effect. It's, uh, I don't know, not that good. Hasn't impressed me yet. Memory lapse, beautiful memory lapse. Getting four M for, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's playable in any format, but I want to own four. Stunning. Ooh, another rare lesson. Again, always going to be surprised by rare just being in the middle of our pack. This one's only okay. I'd, I'd gladly have it on my sideboard in the game of limited, but might see a little bit of constructed play, I think. Very powerful rare, though, for limited. And it's copy. So its front side is like really good for limited. Uh, but its back side could be really good for constructed. And I've seen really the echoing equation, some really interesting stuff with like gold span dragon, like making all your creatures gold span dragons. Is it good enough? I don't know. Is it fun? Definitely. Doggo, this guy is a little weaker for those of you diving into limited, diving in drafts than I thought. Friend pointed out a lot of this, uh, this card's archetype, a lot of the lore hold cards say when a card would leave, leave a graveyard. And then you have a lot of commons that say like return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. This guy specifically says exile, which actually makes him quite hard to trigger. So as much as I'd love to be first picking the doggo, I think he actually is very niche and pretty hard to get going. Bookworm's more up my alley, I think. Or the Afreed. Ooh, okay, well, it's just the Afreed. We're getting a lot of busted rares. Maybe not a lot of expensive rares, but certainly a lot of limited all-stars in this pack, in this box. Again, very powerful mortality spear. This card's great. Gladly picking here, but Plarg. My favorite name of a card in the set. Good old Plarg. Being a chaos. Very good. Um, don't really need to be in white, though the white side of this card is also very good, Dean of Order. But Plarg himself is just an extremely good red card, and I'd gladly play him in any red archetype without being able to play his other side. Very nice D Spark art. And Verdant Mastery. I'm not a fan of this mastery. That being our foil rare is a little sad. I don't, like, I say a little sad, this could be very powerful in EDH, maybe under certain applications. Or maybe I'll learn to, uh, learn to love it, but at the moment, not seeing too much upside in it. Get what I did there, learn to love it. You guys get it. What do we have next? I feel like, and maybe that's just this set a little. I feel like I'm not that constructed excited about everything. There's very, there's some cards I'm very excited about, but in general... Uh, really good limited set, and I can't wait. I'm, I'm very much hoping we get to run some drafts again. Or even if we're beyond this set, maybe we'll do some flashback drafts. That'd be cool. Catch up on some of the uh, the stuff we couldn't play together in COVID. Okay. Nothing exceptional there. Some nice cards. The Ripper part I've already commented on. Storm Killing Artist has impressed me a lot. The treasure is actually being a huge upside and I'm getting out of hand fast, especially in something like Prismari. I very like them. And Prismari Command. This is the command I like out of the set. I did say the commands didn't really, aren't doing justice to its name so far, but Prismari Command I think is uh, head and shoulders above the rest of them in the set. Is this the first prof we've come across? Professor of uh, Symbology. Maybe one of the best in commons, if not the best in common in the set. Just ruthlessly efficient. Another mastery. I don't, I don't know how I feel about the masteries. In general, I think they're kind of a little bit of a medium cycle. Very creative, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how they work out in Commander. Maybe they're going to be like really cool in Commander is the thing. Ooh, awesome brainstorm. you love to see it. Brainstorm's really cool. I have to be a little careful though. Brainstorm's the super powerful card in Legacy. 
So I think people default them limited to thinking it's fantastic, but they forget they can kind of lock themselves out of the game. You don't have any way to shuffle those top two cards away. It can be uh, it can be quite annoying. Though still a good card and triggers Magecraft, so pretty important for that. Oof. Now here's my choice. This is not a good mythic for us to open financially right now, but I think Magma Opus is going to go open price. I think it's very cool, very playable, a lot of different combos with it. I think people are sleeping on it a bit, akin to how they slept on stuff like Cruel Ultimatum. And even if they're not powerful enough right now, with uh, certain cards still being in standard, uh, like Mystic Dispute, rotation's happening soon, and this is a very high-end, great card. I, I, have, uh, I have bought a bunch of them, I'll tell you that much. But... Uh, very cool card. That that is that is Dave's spec of the set. What do we have going on? Flunk, Flunk is a card that I uh, underestimated. I think might just be one of the best uncommons in the set. It's very really solid. Might even see const some constructed play because against control decks that will have the seven cards in hand, yeah, it's annoying that your removal spell doesn't work, but what creatures are control deck playing anyway? Against aggressive decks, they're going to empty their hand pretty fast. Against mid-range decks, it kills most things. So maybe it's going to end up being good enough. I guess the fear is Yorion decks, those kind of mid-range decks that keep their hand size up. You can't kill anything there. So maybe not. Maybe it just doesn't see play over Heartless Act. But it gets a lot of things that Heartless Act and... Um, Heartless Act and Eliminate don't, you know. They, they, it's this nice combination that both of them can't always get. Defiant Strike, love that card. One of my first uh, PPTQ, Defiant Strike in my deck. Uh, heroic all the way back in Teros. Or the second Teros, not the original Teros. Another rare lesson. A new Rampant Grote, which... I've been talking about it a lot with my friends. I have no idea if this is going to be good enough, but it, it certainly seems powerful. Creature supposed to be a downside because it can get Bone Crusher or it can get killed, but in general, maybe it's just an upside. Unexpected upside. Snarl. Chaos Warp. Very cool. Look at that art. EDH staple. Chaos, Chaos Warp. Put in the wrong pile. I think we've uh, gone past this card a couple times, but Trill, uh, Trilling Discovery is interesting because it might uh, help make uh, Dredge that little bit better in Modern. And anytime uh, Dredge gets a little bit better, it's scary because that card's very broken. Oh, that deck's very broken. Ooh, one, of the, one of the cards I don't think is going to go up that much in value because I think sometimes standard rares, even if they're good, end up kind of standing still at a euro or two just because there's so many cards open in kind of Modern Magic. But uh, Callus Blood Mage, solid. Just think it's going to see play for a long time. And in, uh, in Standard might even see a little bit of Pioneer play because it's a Vampire. And the Mono Black Vampire deck good, is good there. But Tree Drop might be a bit too expensive for a Pioneer. And a beautiful Swords to Plowshares. Very nice art on that. Swords to Plowshares, uh, boringly enough, is probably one of my favorite Magic cards of all time. And I think it's one of my favorite Magic cards of all time because the design is so simple. Like it's, it's, it gets the story across. It's why he fell in love with magic. It's a story. It's a, you know, a soldier retiring, going to his farm. He goes into, he's not in the graveyard. He's not dead. He goes to exile. It's just such good use of flavor. He's not useful to the game anymore, you know. And you uh, you reap his rewards. You you get a, you get life in response. I don't know. I, I I go I rant about that too much, but I think I think the flavor on swords to play with shards is just beautiful. Kind of what magic is about. Like this, like unwilling ingredient. How how evocative is is kind of imagery like that? A bit more morbid, but very evocative. Another Quandrix command again. Don't think much of it. Hope it proves me wrong. I love when commands are, are some of the best cards in standard. Commands being good means there's lots of options in gameplay, and options in gameplay lead to fun moments and cool moments. 
Baleful Mastery. So this is the Mastery I do like in any format, I think. The points like is, would be a really good like making the peace deck in Commander in EDH. Now I'm gonna kill your creature. It's too powerful, but you're gonna get to draw a card. You know. Also, it doesn't target, which leads to a very sneaky moment where you're like, I'll let you draw a card if this resolves. Does it resolve? Yeah, it resolved. Okay, I'll choose that other guy. Very sneaky. Double, double major. Could lead to some absurd combo returns. turns. Though I haven't seen anything huge with it yet. I would not be surprised to see double major go up a little bit in price. See some really good commander play and some maybe combo-esque play in standard. What we got here? So, it took me so long to read this card. There's one thing I do, I love flip cards because they allow for so much design. But there's one thing that uh that I hate about them. Like there's just so many words on this card. It took me so many reads to really comprehend what it did. That maybe that's speaking more of me than it is to any uh, card design. But a little complex village rights and ooh, got a foil mythical archive card here. Unfortunately, not one of the really expensive ones. But we're gonna put that in the sleeve. Snake's uh, Skin Veil is a playable card, and that is... I don't know if that's getting across in the camera, but that's stunning. I think a huge reason this set is going to do well is the Foil Mythical Archive cards. I'm jealous. I, I wish I I wish I could afford play sets even nicer in the sleeve. Look at that. Some of these. I, bet, I don't know if, you, uh, if people have seen them all, but the Inquisition of Kozilek. Oh, for them foil. Please. Beautiful. Blade Historian. This card's going to be impactful. Off Winoda. Making it human is a little dangerous. We'll see if it's good enough. I'm going to cultivate. Down to the last two packs. Which one am I going to start with? Keep the, we'll keep the elephant for last. Look at this happy little guy. No way he isn't giving us the goods. He knows. Oh man, this card's nuts and limited. Oh, I've played with her a couple times now. She is, everything she looks like just completely absurd. So is Killian. Killian, I swear, I read this card like five times and I swear to you this card said target creature uh, spells you cast that target a creature you control, but it doesn't. It just says that target that creature. This makes removal cheaper. What? Removal being one or two mana is kind of nuts. I'm very pretty negate. I think that's going to sell very well. Okay, last pack. This has been, I think, a bit of an average box, to be honest, value-wise. Some very cool cards and some cards, I think, in future have room to grow, but not great value directly. Let's see, uh, let's see what this last pack brings us. Mm. Let's slow roll ourselves a little. Who? Okay, I think Witherbloom Command isn't expensive. Again, there's a lot of mid-range kind of rares in this set. But this is a command that could definitely see some play. Not in standard, I think. Standard would have to be in a very specific situation to allow these abilities to be good. But I think this is definitely going to see Eternal format play. We're talking the Stark, Pioneer, maybe even Modern. Like maybe Modern Jund wants one or two of these in their sideboard. Is that last card? I caught a glimpse of it. Oh, that's a nice one. Day of Judgment. Man, I just can't get over how pretty these are. Look at that day of judgment. And solve the equation. Foil again. Some mediocre foils out of this box. We're not gonna we're not gonna hold it against it. All in all, pretty fun. I have not got the crack boxes that often recently. You know, I'm usually the guy in the shop doing all the opening for the singles, so I'm used to opening a lot of boxes a year. So I'm, I'm getting withdrawals almost here, you know. There are all our mystical archive cards for this one. I think that's pretty decent. What are our mythics in the box exactly? Our rares, bit middling. We got a couple of the lands. We got a magma opus, which, again, at the moment, relatively cheap card. But watch out for it. It's your Dave guarantee. That's going to be an expensive one. One day, or I hope one day. And our mythics, not spectacular either. 
Well, spectacular in that they're very cool cards, I guess. Four of them. But that is our first Strixhaven School of Mages draft box opening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. We'll be doing plenty more. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these draft uh, uh, box openings. And let me know your favorite rare from the set. There's so many very cool ones to choose from. Uh, choose from. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.